everybody we're doing a uh, fairly September cornfield checkup and I'm here at our very first planted uh, cornfield uh, some adventure corn here that's yielded pretty good for us over the years uh, but I'm pulling up to the side of the field and I was like man you gotta be cracking kidding me year after year just I mean this was a dang big year oh that's a little bit how kind how sweet how thoughtful anybody got any ideas would that help Anyways, deer season's coming up here in a couple weeks. That would be nice. Big corn-fed Ohio deer. But one of the things, one of the things I want to do, man, they're making a mess. You know, I was always told, you know, put the napkin on your lap so you don't. Never mind. Uh, one of the things I want to do though out here when I look at this corn September is I'm um, looking. For you know, stock. <coughs> Not nice talking food in your mouth. I'm looking for stock strength because if the stock's too weak, no, uh, deer got that one. Doesn't matter. If the stock's too weak, here we go. It might fall over here in the wind or something like that. So it's smart to check your stock strength and prioritize harvest and fields. One of the ways I do that. Is I'll cut the stock open. Yeah, it's pretty strong there. It's not rotten or anything like that. All right. I'm also looking at uh, diseases or something that's making the uh, plant weaker like that. This year, um, tar spot has been, you know, the new disease, the hot topic, and that's, you know, we black dots and black. Um, spores that get over the leaves. This field, uh, not seen any like that, so don't have to worry about that. But that is very common and something that uh, farmers in the eastern corn belt really are keeping an eye out on. So I'm going to pick a couple of ears here at random. I'll move farther into the field to get a better testing. One of the things I'm looking for is um, moisture come closer to harvest. That way I know maybe what fields will be ready first. This one uh, had the planting date and it also had maybe the variety type. So you can see there that this ear is dented. It's a nice thick ear. If I can put my, one of the ways I um, determine uh, maybe the uh, quality or thickness of it is my thumb and uh, my middle finger there, if it can touch, uh, almost can't touch, you know, it's a good ear. I'm guessing this is probably 18 around, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, holy crap. Uh, let see if I count that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Okay, 20, not 22. Uh, 20, so that's pretty dang good. Uh, it doesn't have the length that you would see. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 32, 34, 36, 38, 38. So 20 by 38, and, you know, and times that by your what your population is. So yeah, I'm looking at maybe 200 bushel corn-ish here. We'll see. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a rough estimate. Then you look at corn kernel depth. I like to use my fingernails, so it's definitely longer than my fingernail. Um, and then you look, you look at the milk line, we're close, we're getting close to maturity, uh, there, the corn hasn't quite black layered yet, where, where it reaches its end maturity, because you would see that here at the tip, but it hasn't quite done that yet, there's a quarter milk line left, maybe in about two weeks, it'll, this will be black layered, so I could tell you, I'm going to take a moisture test, but I can tell you right now, my guess, 
We're in the mid 30s, low 30s on moisture, 30, 33, 34 percent moisture on this corn is my guess. We will pick a few ears at random in this field and we'll take them back to our moisture tester uh, back at the home farm. So all right let's go pick let's go pick a few ears. So now we're deeper into the field where I'm going to pick a few ears for our moisture testing and also just checking out the field in general. And uh, the month of August really was drier than we'd like to see especially down here in the southern part of the county so there's not too much soil moisture. But corn has held up all right because of that wonderful July we had. About half the ears, maybe 75% of the ears have fallen. When that happens, when those ears fall at like half milk line, we lose about 10% of our top end yield. So yes, um, yields are going to be good in Ohio, Indiana uh, this year, but not maybe the record yields that we were thinking that we might get come a month or so ago. So I went out in the field a little bit farther and I picked three ears at random. So what I'm going to do now, other than just uh, inspect the ears, there's another there's a longer one. They all didn't quite get that green fill, but that's all right. This is actually, of course, we'd like to see it filled to the top, but this is actually somewhat what you're looking for because then you know that your planting population was about right. If you see that was filled to the top, you're like, well, I left some yield potential because I didn't plant thick enough maybe. But if we would have had a better August, that would have been filled anyways. Um, so now I got my ears checked out. I got probably 20 or 18, 18 around, 16 around, but a longer year. So they're all somewhat consistent. And now I'm going to start showing them. So I'm going to hand shell these three ears to get enough to run through the um, sampler to get a, a moisture test. Now remember I said somewhere in the low 30s is what I'm guessing. So I'll have to change the moisture tester to high moisture, uh, to sample high moisture corn. Now since I am sampling this with my hand, I will add probably one and a half, two percent to the whatever the test says to uh, make up for maybe the dryness that's happening now. So this process will take me a couple minutes here. So we'll check back in here in a bit. So it's a little dusty because I really haven't used it uh, maybe for wheat since last uh, fall. So I'm going to take this corn and I have it in high moisture mode. I'm going to put it in here to the fill level. Just about shelled the right amount. Then I'm going to put it in there. So it kind of does this off of weight there. So it's measuring it. And this machine can also tell me some other things like um, test weight and other, other things like that with the corn. We try to do this with almost every load that comes in here so we keep an accurate account for it. So there's my 35.9 and then I add probably another point and a half too. So I'm just a little below maybe 37% moisture. So a little bit higher than what I was guessing. It also tells you the temperature and the approximate test weight there so far. So this will have um, in the low 30s, high 20s, it'll black layer. So probably in about a week or two, it'll black layer and then it'll be officially mature. So uh, we're getting dang close to harvest. Uh, pretty excited what I've seen out there on those years, but yeah, that's your uh, corn checkup. So far, there's definitely moisture. You can feel the moisture just in the kernels. So we're approaching that time of year where, yeah, rain would be nice maybe to finish out the top, the end of our beans. But for corn, uh, it's all about dry down come the second half of September and October. So 
that's your early September corn checkup and how things are looking out here. Uh, Gigs Farmer out.